And this is a thousand gallon rainwater collection system that I'm fully done with. We finally got some decent weather where it's not too hot, not too cold, and it's not raining. So we're gonna start this on. This is where I'm at right now. So I've dug a trench, 18 inches, half of the tank, half up. The reason I'm doing that is because the last time I buried this rainwater collection system in my last video, I previously stated that it actually flooded because this was the lowest point on the property. So I decided to dig it back up again and then raise up the floor. So that's what we're doing today. So now what I gotta do is level this out to where that tank will sit flat because it's bowed right now. But uh, we'll just level this off as best we can. And then once we know where this is going to be, which is the port to connect to the PV or the PEX piping into the house so that way the water can suck into the house, then we can start routing PEX, pretty much both. So we got PEX here and the idea is going to be putting PEX in and then wrapping around this pool noodle, and then putting it in some three inch PVC, putting some holes through the PVC and then spraying it into spray foam for that way it doesn't get uh, frozen. So that's the plan here. Oh, and then I have to cut this and put an extension in and then kick this back because it is leaning a little bit as you can see. So with that said, let's get started. First things first, leveling out the rainwater system hole. All right, we got the tank in. Might need a little bit more leveling. It's not super crucial. It's just, we don't want it too off center. So I think this is good. This is exact height of what I wanted. There ain't no way water is actually gonna go over top of the lid now. It'd have to be literal feet. And then if so, the house is gonna get floated. <laughs> so we just gotta make sure we have enough room right there for the PEX piping. So we're gonna have to pull that over just a little bit. But we'll see. Raining for the next couple days. So we're just going to use this as a placement holder. So that way we can get the PEX in and then later just drop back down the tank. The reason I want to do that is because if I keep this tank in here and it rains so hard that there is a water pit in here, it'll actually float the tank up, which it's done before because there's no rain in it. And I haven't finished out the part where the rainwater puts in water into the tank. So we don't want to do that. Pretty much we're just going to use this as a placement right now and then get the PEX to the point where we can just lead it up when we drop it back down in next. But we need to have this in the ground first so that way we know where the PEX is actually going to. I've already dug the trench. It's 18 inches deep all the way around. So we're going to connect from there first and then travel all the way down through here and then wrap it in like a half moon over there. So first things first, we are putting together the PEX pipe. Gotta do this first. So just wanted to show you what is going on in here. So idea here is gonna be PEX pipe, pool noodle. Then we're gonna put it in three inch PVC, right? And we're gonna drill holes inside, inside the PVC. That way I can put a nozzle down and spray closed cell spray foam inside for insulation. Hopefully this works. So the idea here is we gotta do the 90 degree elbows first. So that way we can get it inside. Because if you put your straight pipe down and if you run, if you, if you do your PEX pipe all first, you ain't going to be able to put your 90 degree elbows in. It's just this one inch PEX isn't flexible enough. So you got to do everything all one step by one step. It's going to look a little weird, but then it's all going to come together. So trust the process. So we already crimped this. This is one inch PVC, 90 degree elbow. And then we got our pool noodle just like some gray insulation. What we're gonna do here now is put that up to the top, about right there, it's probably gonna move. We're gonna put this in here and then, so the first bit of the rainwater collection system is pretty much finished. Like I said, we were routing the PEX pipe through the PVC and wrapped in pool noodle. Well, we got that all done now. So it comes from the rainwater collection system I did a two inch thread to one inch PEX, which is right here. And then I had the PEX 90 degree elbow. And right here you can see where the layers are right here. So you got your pool noodle, you got your PVC, and then your PEX. And we got a new kitty in town. Arrived here at the tiny house last night about 2 a.m. So she's meowing. But anyways, we got that all routed through. So 90 degree 
And this is to suck the water from the tank into the house. It goes all the way underneath the tiny house and then it routes itself back into the kitchen. We gotta put the last bit in here. I had to cut this out to be able to fit it because these are the last little bits. You really just can't do it because of all of the crimps and everything. However, after we get done testing that, we will put a hot water heater in and be able to test. After we have some water inside, we'll be able to test this whole system. And then to bury it and complete it, we'll put a little bit of plywood as an insulator and then we'll bury this whole entire thing. And then a year from now, this is all going to be completely grass filled up, looking clean, just like that. This was my French drain at one point. So I built this and it's about six foot deep, I believe. And I just put some grass seed down so I'll be able to mill right over top of this, but this is a French drain. And that's one thing I got to do for the rainwater collection system. So it's actually going to go from here and then drop down. Super simple, right? Well, it's also got to veer off, go down. And then I did a 45 street sweep right here with a, this is the old one. So I had a shut off valve. So when that water tank got too full, I shut this off and it would go back up and then through here and then into this French drain. So I got to route that somehow as well. So what I'm thinking is it'll be straight pipe right here and then just down, simple, right? Off the roof, into the gutters, first flush system back up into the tank, but it'll also Y out so it'll Y out and then drop all the way down to about right here and then go back into the French drain. Looks like a lot, but trust me, it's organized. It's ready to roll. Get that right. Alrighty, another day working on the rainwater collection system. We got the kitty over here. Still haven't had the babies yet. But today, cooled it off a little bit by raining a little bit. So we got this done. We got the lower half almost all done. We're gonna start working on this part right here. So pretty much the first thing that we need to do is I need to sawzall this in half. This goes into the French drain. So this is a first flush system that kind of trickles down into the French drain. And then we got another pipe over there, but you can see here, it isn't straight. So what we're gonna do is saw it in half, push it back so that way it's fully aligned. Ended up not being able to reuse the old system just because the old system would have been perfect but it was at a lower angle so this is a new higher angle completely different system but i was able to find at the store the same thing that i did here so i actually made this custom this hole and everything and it fit perfectly just like that no gaps in between that's what it's going to look like I'm not going to be able to use this this is the old one but i was able to find one super familiar like that so i'll just put another three inch inside and then it'll fit perfectly on the new system. And then we'll paint it all black and everything. So not to worry, got a ton of things. So I think we're gonna be able to retrofit everything in real quick, see how it looks, and then be able to glue it later on. So let's do it. Alrighty, and we are finally finished here at the tiny house building the rainwater collection system. This is a thousand gallon rainwater collection system that I'm fully done with. We were working on the PEX piping and now we have the entire system from the roof to the gutters to the leaf eater guard to the first flush system and then all the way down into the tank. So pretty much what this thing does is pretty simple. We literally runs the first initial rainfall off of the roof into the gutters and I got some nice leaf eater gutters in there so nothing no debris getting inside then it'll go into this leaf eater guard which collects all this fine debris and then it'll go down into here which is your first flush system and this first flush system has a spring loaded in there it takes about a gallon or two which is just enough and it'll slowly fill this chamber up pushing the water into the tank which is good because all this dirty water is going to slowly sip out into the French drain. So it's just redirected into the French drain. This has an O-ring that will slowly drip this dirty water out so that way it can continuously recycle. And then once it's filled, let's say the tank's filled, I shut off valve off, and then it can go into the redirect overflow and then go straight into the French drain as well. So that's pretty simple. That's all there is to it. Just going to be filling this up with rainwater. If we don't get enough, uh, there is other ways that I can do so. Then we're going to do some testing, see if 
all this is good and dandy and then we'll fill it fill it backfill everything and then uh, we'll have rainwater so that's pretty much it i know uh, i didn't show the process of actually building the system just because every system is going to be different but pretty much you're just going to have a roof you're going to have some type of gutters gutter leaf eater guard a first flush system and then depending on how far or how big your tanks are that's going to determine how long your system is and if you want to get fancy you can redirect your overflows into your french drains and all that stuff that i see and you see here not necessarily don't have to do this but it's just something i like to do i've never done it this sophisticated before but this is going to be here for a long time and I wanted to make it right. So here we are, thousand gallons ready to go. If you guys have any comments or questions, make sure to drop them below. And uh, if I get a ton of the same one, I'll make a separate video about it. Or uh, if I find any of them interesting, I'll make a separate video about it. So hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe and like this video. Share it with somebody that's interested in living off the grid or tiny. And I'll see you guys in the next video.